For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. Oh, he's a joy. He's going to be a thrill. <laughs> I'm being rushed. I don't like being rushed. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, it's Wednesday. It's the end of April. It's April's, uh, finally April's getting in to the bag, be springtime. Finally. It's going quick. Well, that's just life in general. Yeah. Get used to it. No, nope. I don't have to get used to it. Yeah, you do, because the only other option is die. No, that's no option. It's it's going to imperative. It's going to happen anyway. Mm. Sooner the better. Okay. <laughs> Let's get it over with. <laughs> All right. All righty then. Well then, right into the stupid news. Okay. Oh, do you have into something other you want to talk about? We uh, we didn't even play our uh, our intro to a stupid news. I know. Poor Matt. He's rushing around too. Like everything is all discombobulated and changed and different and all that sort of thing. Did you have something special you wanted to talk about? Nothing special. No. Nothing special. Did you have something special? Well, I do have a story, but I thought I would save that one till later. Is it a good story? Yeah, it is actually. It's okay. a good story. It's one of those that goes, there are good people still in the world. Really? Yes. Believe it or not, I actually have one of those. You have one of those that really there's good people left in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stories. I thought it was about time. I mean, we keep talking about all these stupid people and criminals. Well, once and all in that. a while, you get a couple of good ones. Yeah, once in a while, you got to find a story about somebody who did something good just to kind of make you feel better about the world. You know, because otherwise, you just want to crawl into a hole and die. Kind of like. Thanks for helping. You just said sooner the better. All right, so if you have nothing specific 
something special you want to talk about? You want to go right into our stupidness? You want to go right into the stupid news? That'll do your uh, your intro for you. Okay. Take it away. <laughs> okay, Miss America is in the stupid news. Believe it or not. Okay. Have you seen Miss America? She's really pretty. Um, no. Is that her? That's her. Okay. Yeah. She's really pretty. Um, she is actually, she didn't do something stupid. The school that she was at for an assembly kind of a thing, it did something stupid. They um, did something stupid. Yes. The boy in the picture next to her, he got up in the middle of an assembly and they, you know, they had a question and answer session. And she got up, I mean, he got up and asked her to the prom with him. Well, that old gag. I know. It's getting kind of old. I mean, everybody's doing it. Everybody's asking somebody famous to the prom. Um, I don't know, I guess because you can, because social media is easy now. I don't really know. But anyway. Well, he did it right in the classroom there. That takes well, some. Yeah, uh, there was some kind of an assembly. And at first, I thought, well, he's, he's being punished for doing this. What? Oh, he, the, the school is? No, the kid. Who's punishing him? The school. That's what I'm saying. Yes, the school is punishing him. They gave him three days in school suspension. Really? How old is the kid? He's 18. So why is he being punished? Apparently, the school knew that he, this was something he wanted to do, and they, they told, told him, him not. not to. And he, did, and he anyway. did it anyway. Realistically, I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah. They, they said he, um, he... And what did she say? Did she accept? She said she can't go. Her travel schedule is such that she can't. I'm so busy, I just can't go. I think it would be really sweet if she did go. I mean, I he, think, yeah, at I think, first I thought, okay, I well, he's, he's a pain in the butt, and he's, you know, he's one of those kids that does stuff that he's not supposed to all the time or whatever. And then I looked at his picture, I'm like, yeah, no. He's probably, you know, a smart kid who does the, what he's supposed to do all the time. He probably gets no attention. The girls probably don't even know he exists. Really? Look at the kid. Is that not a good-looking kid? He's just your average kid. He's cute. I'm thinking the girls are all over the guy. I don't think so. Well, that's actually one of the better pictures I found of him. He's, he's a little bit of a geek. I wish it was a better picture of me that looked that good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's my better picture. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's okay. I mean, he's cute, but he, I think he's probably a little bit of a geek. You think so? Yeah, I think so. He's watching Nerdgasm later. Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> Is that what you're saying to well, me? Well, the assembly was uh, talking about the importance of science, technology, engineering, and math, and he was at it. So okay. it was one of two reasons. He's a little so, bit of a nerd, or he wanted to ask Ms. America to Sheldon the, Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> to the prom. <clears throat> so she's asking the school to not punish him, to rescind the, or take back, or whatever, the punishment and let him off the hook. That's okay. kind of sweet. That's nice. Yeah. Did she hit him with the scepter and uh No, that's give him only the... in Real Housewives. There's nothing real about those housewives. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm sorry. I just gotta tell you. I know that. That's I can't believe people are wasting their lives watching that stuff. It just I don't get it. I saw a snippet and I I'm, I really want that time back in my life. <laughs> It doesn't particularly interest my, me either, but there's plenty of people who it does, apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Mm. Okay, so Bryant University. Bryant. Yes, Bryant University in uh, Rhode Island is asking their graduating students this year to not take selfies with the president of the school. Not to do what? Take selfies. With the, the president, you know when you, you go to graduation, you walk up onto the thing and they hand you your, your diploma and then you right. shake the hand of the right, president right, right. or the principal or whatever, uh, whoever's the dean, the whatever. Diploma. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is... Um, Everybody's taking selfies with the guy who's handing them the diploma. Correct. Well, this is a university, so it's president. Oh, it's the president. Right. Well, apparently the deal is like these the kids are going up. America. Yeah. The kids are going up and they're taking a selfie of themselves with this guy. With the president. Correct. He has asked them not to do please that. Please do not. Yes, please don't. Uh, there are 800 students graduating, and he feels that it's going to uh, it's going to make this ceremony that normally takes hours take that much longer because it's disrupting 
blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm thinking the whole selfie thing, can it please be over? Please, 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 please. I don't do selfies. I don't know. Well, I know a lot of people who do, but I don't understand why I you know do somebody them. who does. Who? Matt doesn't do selfies. Come on, that one with you puckering? Tell me that wasn't a selfie. That wasn't a selfie. That was a photographer. Still, that's got, that selfie? it's got selfie written all over it. Mm -mm. What's the difference? It's still to get the whole pucker thing going on. I saw you. Get the... Every time I see that one, I'm like, look at that pucker. <laughs> well, my personal feeling is the reason why people do selfies is because nobody loves them enough to take their picture. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Chuck's world. How many pictures you got of me? A lot. Yeah, baloney. No, I do. I got about 9 million pictures of a dog. What? Of Ben. I have a whole bunch of pictures of you. Really? Yes. As a matter of fact, on that weekend that we went away for our anniversary slash your birthday, how many pictures were taken of you? And we took selfies. We took one, but the reason for that... Because we were afraid to give somebody the camera. They exactly. Ran away with it. We took a picture of ourselves together, and, and it was... See, now, I got to tell because you. Here we are at the top of the Empire State Building looking out over the, the scenery. Do you want me to tell you why people take selfies? Because nobody loves them enough to take their picture. No, because when you take a selfie, you got to go like this, and you shoot it from up, up top. And the reason why you do it shows that... shows off your bald spot? Well, yeah, that's a bad thing for me. <laughs> it shines off the bald spot, and you get a glare. But no, if you, if you look up like this, then you only got one neck instead of a whole bunch of chins. Ah. Uh, you know? Yeah. You got more chins than a Chinese phone Yeah, book. but you don't have to do that. You could take a selfie right in front of you. You, you could take a selfie from down low. No. Nah, yes, Down low can. is never a good thing. <laughs> But you can. Like I said, yes, we have, I think, two from that weekend. I think two. we have two, yes. Two pictures. Mm -hmm. That's it. Two whole pictures from the whole weekend. No, of us that we took ourselves of each other, of ourselves. Because we somebody took a picture. Nobody was somebody? with us. Yes, one person actually did and take a picture And they didn't steal a phone. And they didn't steal a phone. Go figure. But we also took their picture for them. Oh. We so. traded phones. <laughs> Trust no one in New York City. That's right. <laughs> How much did that guy want for the roses? 20 bucks? Remember yeah. that? <laughs> he wanted 20 Take a rose, they're free. 20 bucks. <laughs> what happened to the 20 bucks? They're free. Uh, 20 bucks for a rose? You're kidding me, right? It was two roses, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, still, that's much better. Well, I personally think, like I said, me, personally, selfies, please be over. Done. No more. I'm done. I've had enough. Done with selfies, are you? All yes, please. People don't look like that. Selfies? That whole, it's not real. The whole what? The, the duck lip thing that they do. Yeah, no, nobody looks like that. Nobody, anywhere, ever. They that's look the, like that when they smell something. I think something they're trying funny. to pout. I think that's the idea, they're pouting. Yeah, I know, because you want that kissable lip look. <laughs> that's what I think of that. <laughs> Sorry, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> well, here's one right up uh, your uh, your perverted alley, huh? Mm, okay. Yeah, apparently this uh, Florida lawmaker was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence early Monday morning after police saw him run a red light. Okay. Yeah, so Tallahassee police officers pulled over the uh, state Republican Dane Eagle around 2 a.m., according to the court documents obtained. Um, the officer first spotted Eagle pulling out of a Taco Bell restaurant. Yay! Aha! At 2 a.m. Maybe he was getting something for me. Probably. They're only open till 2 a.m. you got to get there quick. I know. He probably had a call load of uh, tacos for Bonnie. Mmm. Yummy. Yes. And then he had a near miss with one curb before veering into a second curb and running a red light. And his eyes were bloodshot and he smelled of alcohol on his breath. Oh, no. Past it. <laughs> Even lawmakers get drunk. Go figure. Yeah, we know a few. Do we? On our dime, absolutely. Well, he's no longer mayor, but he was mayor. Well, he, how, how, do you, how do you say that? I mean, if you're paying the lawmaker, yes. is it a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week thing? Or is it a nine-to-five deal? So if they're drinking after five, are they on our dime? Mm. Yes, yeah. but, yes, we pay their salary, agreed. But, but is, the, is the salary a 24-hour salary no. or is it a 9-to-5? They have expense accounts, Matt says. Yeah, but is, are they buying the alcohol on an expense account? Sometimes. No. I do for my clients when I use my card. 
Yeah, but you're not a lawmaker. You're a troublemaker. That's different. <laughs> What's that, troublemaker? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I no, I don't think that they are they're on the clock 24/7. That doesn't seem right. But either way, they it's should an have example, some right? Of their own time. But it's I think certain example. jobs, yes, they should definitely set an example. And I think certain jobs, yes, they always always should be considered on the clock. Policemen, they're always on the clock. No. Yeah. Because they can't, they can't leave, if they see a, a crime happening, they can't just turn a blind eye because they're not on the clock. If they're not carrying, they can. Yeah, that's what I mean, they can't touch them. Um, or a nurse, or a doctor. Doctors can't either. They can never turn a blind eye. If they see somebody like dying or something, they have to stop and help them. Nurse too, yeah. Yep. Any any care any caregiver. Yeah, they, they can't have to. leave until somebody who's higher level than them takes over. Mm -hmm. Not that you would know that they drove right by an accident, but Not unless they have those MD plates. Yes, that's part of the oath that they take, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to take a quick break because it's commercial time, believe it or not. And when we come back, I have a brand new job for Matt. Uh oh. Yes, I have a job for him. He's I think, got I think going he can make on, some he? serious money on this one. Doesn't he have enough going on? <laughs> well, I don't know if he's going to want to take this one. But in the meantime, while you're waiting for us to come back, check out the contest tab. We've got Kill Switch at the Paramount in Huntington, along with Volbeat and Trivium and Jenny McCarthy. So go check out the contest tab. We will be back momentarily. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hi, I'm Dave Canfield, host of Nerdgasm. I'm Joe Winchell, nobody likes me. And I'm Peppercorn Montgomery. Tune in every Wednesday night, only on Enravio.com, to hear the greatest nerd discussion of all time. It is Nerdgasmic. It'll be the best Nerdgasm you've ever had. back two guys and a chick Yay. welcome back to the show so I have a new job for Matt 
Okay, a new job for Matt. Yes, I don't know a if new, you want new, it, Matt. You mean a new client for the uh, the PR firm? No, I think Only to Matt be honest one? with you, not that I want to lose you, but I think if you were to take this on, this would be a full time job because this is a really big, big thing. I don't know if anybody can actually do it. Nobody can pull this off. No, the <clears throat> the KKK has decided that they need a new image. <laughs> they need to jazz up the outfit. <laughs> yes. The, um, they said in the wake of last week's shootings outside two Jewish institutions, their imperial wizard, Frank Ancona, he spoke out against the alleged shooter. The grand, the grand wizard, right? Yes, the imperial wizard. Ah. The imperial wizard. Grand high exalted mystic wizard. That's right. Um, the, the person who did it apparently is a white supremacist. And he says that what this guy did, his, uh, he's an anti-Semite. His name is Fraser Glenn Cross. He says what he did has set back everything he's been trying to do for years. So <laughs> he's actually saying that what that guy did is not what they do, believe it or not. The other guy. Yes, the imperial wizard says that the guy who burned up the, the Jewish people is not, he's, he's bad. Not their MO. No. No, he says he believes in racial separation, but it doesn't have to be violent. Really? That's what he says. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says people in the Klan are professional people, business people, working types. He calls themselves a legitimate organization. So, um, He's, he says, Isn't it he, one of the oldest uh, organizations or something? Probably. I don't know how long they've been around. He says he recognizes that the KKK may need to rebrand its image in order to let people know that the modern clan is about educating people to their ideas and getting people to see their point of view to well, help change things. They do have a newsletter if you want to sign up. <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. So... If you're interested, Matt, they're looking for rebranding. They, they need PR like nobody's business. <laughs> I would decline to. I think that that I would think be... that's high profile. That might be oh, good money. If you, you know, can you it imagine? It is also called, by the way, the Hooded Order. The Cola? The Hooded Order. The Hooded Order. Yeah. Can you imagine if you managed, or anybody, if anybody managed to turn their image around so much that the public didn't think of them as this hate organization or this violent, horrible group of people. If somebody could manage to do that, can you imagine the money they could make on other clients? You know, how, like, yeah. If people would be able, like, oh my God, he could take the devil and make him into something amazing. Exactly. Well, it's got uh, between 5,000 and 8,000 members as of 2012. That's just frightening. Yeah, it flourished in the southern United States in the late 1860s. Wow. Flourished. Mm. Yeah, if you could convince anybody that they're good, you could probably get people to accept, oh, I don't know, Beelzebub is their kid's babysitter. Really? <laughs> okay. I mean, really? No? I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you... Uh, if you could turn the clan around to where they're, uh, you know, liked household name. They're suddenly Barney, yes. Yeah, suddenly Barney. Uh, that would make you the big tuna of uh, PR, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that would be like. You'd be the number one spin doctor. Absolutely. All right. So moving a little further west, in Kansas, there's a man up for murder. Okay. Okay. He's going on trial. His name is Jeffrey Chapman. He's being charged. He's got a murderer's name. Yeah, he does. He He's... needs three names, though. That's true. Well, no, because that's only serial killers. Oh. Jeffrey. Yeah. Well, you know, no murder. All right. Ser I'll get it. Serial killers. Yeah. Jeffrey so... David Chapman. Mark David Chapman. Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's charged in the November 2011 killing of somebody named Damon Galliard. I don't know who he is, but the big thing... He was a bad he, guy, apparently. I guess. If you look at his picture, at Jeffrey's picture... Jeffrey. He's on trial for murder. Take a look at his picture. Mm -hmm. He's on trial for murder. Red rum. <laughs> he's got murder tattooed <clears throat> on his neck. The He's irony, going away. The, he wants to actually have the tattoo covered 
for the trial. I think you should have it colored and add some, some pretty flowers or something to it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a big piercing right through the whole throat. <laughs> Couldn't you find the turtleneck? Don't they make turtleneck, uh, you know, prison garb? You know, that would probably be easier. He actually found a tattoo artist who'd be willing to go into the prison to cover it or remove it or whatever, or whatever. in the prison. Right, of course. Be I think the teardrop does mean something I don't remember. What does it mean? How many people you killed? I think that's. I think that is what it means. The teardrop on the face. Really? I think so. Yeah. I think a, as a, a is gang that a thing. gang thing? I think so. Yeah. Matt, how many teardrops you got, baby? <laughs> so every teardrop is somebody you killed? Supposedly. I don't know if it's true. So what you're telling me? Yeah. Is I can go home and start polishing up to 357 because these guys are like open season. Why? Because if I see one, I know he killed somebody. He's got the teardrop. I'll just whack the guy. Why? You want some teardrops he wrote? No, but I mean, let's do society, uh, you know, some justice there. Oh, my goodness. Chuck Schultz, vigilante. I just thought it was entertaining that he wanted to get this tattoo covered because he felt it would, it would influence the jury. Do you think? <laughs> Personally, it's all over the news. Covering it now is kind of, uh, you know... The horse has left the barn, closed the door. I mean, you know, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Well, the, um, the, they're not allowing it. They're not allowing him to have it covered. They'll probably allow him to wear a turtleneck or something like that. But the, um, let's see, the, who is it? No shortage of nuts. <laughs> the uh, Kansas Administrative Code states that tattoo artists shall not practice in any location other than a licensed facility. Oh, jeez, please. So they won't, they, on a technicality. What, they, is he going to wind up getting a, an infection? Oh, boy. I don't know. They, the, on a technicality, they're not allowing the tattoo artist to come in there and, and do anything about it. And they won't transport him to a tattoo parlor. So yeah, it's not going to happen. happen. Not going to happen. The prosecution doesn't want it to. I wouldn't either, if it were me. I want that out there. All right, you want me to you want me to bring it back home for you? Okay. Oh, I got that story. You got that story? Of course I right, have so that story. Okay, we're going to... It's right here. <laughs> it's right in our backyard. We can open a window and spit on it. I know. I wasn't <laughs> ready for that one, though. I, had, I have another prison story. Okay. Um, so this one, you know, we, we, we talk about the, the people who... Um, well, they, they put things where they don't belong. Like forks? <laughs> yeah. Shower curtain rods? Things of that nature, yes. Gerbils? Um, gerbils. Oh, God, toasters. Toaster strudel. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, a uh, Tennessee 19 year old is being charged with um, possession of stolen property, illegal possession of a firearm, and introducing contraband into a jail because she smuggled a miniature 22 into a prison in her hoo-ha. Yep, it's been done. I know. That's old hat. I... What you gotta do, the easiest thing to do, you know, instead of strip searching them all, all you gotta do is smack them in the butt as they're walking in. If the gun goes off, you know, they're, they're packing. Right? Come on. Hey, honey, how you doing? Bam! <laughs> That's one down. Next. Oh, goodness. Really, when you think about it, you can send them through a big, giant magnet, and they just magnetize to it. You know, that there's something going funny. on. That would be funny. Wouldn't it? That would really they be funny. You turn it on. Burr, burr. <laughs> Shut it off. They fall on the floor. <coughs> how funny would that be? You know, it's bad enough that she's sneaking this this gun into the prison, but it's a stolen gun besides. Oh, jeez. She is a So winner. she's going to go inside for permanent. <laughs> she's a uh, keeper, that one. Yes, definitely. I'm sewing up for my conjugal visits. <laughs> Where my man at? No, you didn't. Mm. All right. So... Now we move along to Pennsylvania. Okay. I got one. <laughs> you have a Pennsylvania story? I got a Pennsylvania one too, I think. Yeah. Floating around. Um, 
A woman got? named um, Sullenberger. What the hell is this first Sullenberger. name? Sullenberger. Yes. I had her first name. I don't know where it went. Okay. Uh, Lori. Lori Sullenberger. She's a 38 year old woman. She ended up in the hospital. Okay. I don't know why. They haven't released why she was in the hospital, what she was sick from. It really doesn't matter. The point is, she was in ICU. Okay, so she had to be really, really sick. Somehow, yeah. even while in ICU, she continued to, de to deal heroin. Really? From her hospital room. How did she, what are we, coming in and picking up right there? Yes. No. Yes. You're kidding. <laughs> no. Oh, that's just too awesome. Is this her? That's her, yes. That's just too awesome. She, uh, now that's a businesswoman, I got to tell you. <laughs> Nothing deters her. No. Not at all. The, um, the hospital became suspicious because there were a large number of people flowing in and out of her room. That were not relatives. Apparently. And I see you, don't you have to be related? Yes. I thought that was a related thing. I don't, I don't, they don't check. It's not like they, you know, ID please. But, you know, they... So yeah, she's, got a, she's got a bag of this, uh, her merchandise right there in the nightstand or what? Apparently, yes. The police searched her room. They found $3,800 in heroin, two syringes, and $1,400 in cash. Wow. In her room. Kudos. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, that's like, you know, she, she doesn't matter. She's not going down with a full gun. Her back hits the floor, that gun's going to be empty, you know? So you're impressed by I'm her work I'm impressed by her uh, ingenuity there, and yeah. And her work ethic. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying right there. I think, you know, is she available? We oh. might have an opening here at the Enravio uh, oh, you can, Network. No? You can have her if you want her. I'll put her in your care. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll put her in your charge there, uh, Chipka. All right, how about this? A woman visiting her mother in Oregon is suing her neighbor, seeking $275,000 for pain, suffering, and other damages she says were inflicted when a pet duck ambushed her for no apparent reason. Okay, $275,000 because a duck attacked. Yes. Apparently, uh, Cynthia Ruddell, 62, of Washington, was on her mother's property in Oregon, about 25 miles southeast of Portland, when the neighbor's duck attacked her without provocation. Oh, no. According to the suit filed in Oregon State Court last Friday. In her attempt to run away, the agitated waterfowl, um, <laughs> Ruddle apparently fell to the ground, breaking her right wrist and spraining an elbow and shoulder, the, claim, uh, the suit claims. The incident occurred in May of 2012. So the bird's owner is being sued. Lolita Rose is failing uh, to maintain control of her pet. Duck. Or to warn or otherwise inform neighbors of her duck's dangerous, uh, you know, <laughs> Did you see the sign, Beware attack of duck. duck. I want a sign that says attack duck. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to put that on my office door. <laughs> Beware of attack duck. <laughs> Yeah. No fangs. This is a little little baby duck deck. <laughs> right? Okay. A little tiny one. A little tiny one. <laughs> With the furry feathers. With the furry feathers, the whole thing. Yeah. Waddling his little tail. <laughs> Beware of attack duck. Okay. <clears throat> I'll have to see if I can get you one of those. You know what? Not for nothing, but uh, including roughly $25,000 for medical expenses, um, the remainder is for pain, suffering, and the toll her injuries have taken on her daily life, $275,000. Surprised she didn't tack in there another, uh, you know, 100000 bucks for loss of services. No, 175000 for being embarrassed that she was attacked, attacked by, by a, a duck. duck. That sounds I'm wild. wondering how big was this duck? You know, we're making fun of it. Maybe this duck was six foot six. No, it's a duck. It's just a plain old duck. But I'm thinking they come... There's probably a little fat duck somewhere. You know, like the His ugly. His name is Chuck. <laughs> His name is Chuck. <laughs> Chuck the duck. Right? Come on, it's possible. All these little ducks, normal size duck, and there's this big fat duck there. Little, little, little duck, little duck, little duck. Chuck! <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe, you know. Chuck's a little abrasive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, all right. Well, we need to take another little, little quick break, but in the meantime, while we're on our break, Check out the contest tab. We have Kill Switch Engage at the Paramount in Huntington on Thursday, May 1st. We're giving away tickets to that. Uh, there's also Volbeat with Trivium and Jenny McCarthy, and there's tons more shows at the Paramount. So if you don't want to win what we have, or if we've already given away and you can't win them, go to ParamountNY.com and check out all the great shows that they have. Yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff. They're really, every day they're adding more stuff. I think that's some great shows. I want to go. They've got some crazy stuff there. Yeah, I think Whoopi Goldberg's going to be there this weekend. So. Yeah. Dennis Miller. All right, I so mean, go really check it out. Getting into the comedy stuff. Come right back because we've Jenny got Miller. lots more good stuff. Yeah. Two, one. I'm Nikki Lorenzo, and be sure to watch In or Out, pun intended, on Friday nights on inradio.com. Transmission of lice occurs from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like catching a cold or a flu. You have guaranteed peace of mind in every bottle of Got Lice because all of our products are completely natural. And organic. But strong enough to cover all your lice removal needs while being safe and effective. Our professional technicians are specially trained with our exclusive proven technique to successfully comb out head lice. We come right to your home at your convenience. Whenever you want us. We bring everything needed to perform a successful and complete comb out while eliminating your head lice. And we leave you with our exclusive complimentary products to use for the next 10 days following our treatment. For free. Our technicians also check all family members who have been exposed to lice. Please visit us on our website today at gotlice.co or feel free to call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 646-257-0121. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in radio.com. I got music, the beginning. We are back. Don't you want to dance to that opening? No, not like they don't <laughs> dance to rock music that way. Gotta get a little sway going on there. No, not like you're on a you know the short bus. 
<laughs> no, not like you're out drinking with Matt. No, who you did? Who did? Gotta do the chef thing. No. Gotta do it. Come on. You did it for the party. Do it for the, the viewers. There was wine involved. She's got plenty of wine. She just needs some cheese. <laughs> The no, I needed to have the forks, by the way. Yes. I needed the forks. The forks? Yeah, because you used the forks, and then he would throw them behind him. Oh, I got gotcha. you. was done. Yeah, that yeah, would, I remember the that would have been stuck in the wall. I'm sure Matt's mom would have loved that. <laughs> forks sticking out of the wall. Oh, goodness. Well, one of them was a spoon. A spoon? A spoon. Yes, it was a spork. <laughs> one was a spork he had? No. He had a spoon and a fork. He had a wooden spoon and a wooden fork. We're talking about the Swedish chef, in case anybody doesn't know. Anyway, so moving right along. My on device to... is dead. You're lucky. <laughs> He's My got device the video. is dead. I have the video. Portland, Oregon has to drain their reservoirs, their water reservoirs, for the second time in three years, believe it or not. Really? Millions of gallons of water they're draining. This is the drinking water for Portland, Oregon. Second time, three years. Why? Because some kids- Duck poop? No. Apparently they're fine with duck poop. But some teenager apparently climbed the fence and peed into the reservoir. Oh, and that threw them off. That threw them off. 38 million gallons of water in this reservoir, which is wide open so that anyone could get in there and pee in it if they wanted to. And how many people have? Yeah. This is the only one they know and of. And so they're going, 38 million gallons, and they're going to drain it. Now, part of me, they're, they're going to drain it into a river. Apparently, they're just going to drain it into a river. They're not worried about it because they're Portland, Oregon, and they're not in the, in the desert, and they're not worried about not having enough water because they have plenty. But they're going to get rid of it. They said that it's actually completely safe, that it is so incredibly diluted because it's 38 million gallons compared to this guy's 12 ounces or whatever. Bird poop flying you know, over, and, dumping it into this right. reservoir. They said that animals routinely deposit waste without creating a public health crisis. Yeah, but they've got chlorine and stuff to, uh, to deter these things, don't they? No. Chlorine. You it's, don't drink chlorine. Of course you do. The this water, is already treated water. Right. The water you drink is treated with chlorine. A tiny bit. It's chlorinated water. A tiny bit. Yes, a tiny bit. But it's to get rid of the, the uh, bacteria things. and stuff. Yeah. Yes. But it's okay for all the ducks and the birds and the whoever else. But one guy. There's a piece of me that says, oh, come on. And then there's a piece of me going, ew. Because you're Where drinking bottled water. water, water from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worried now. Exactly. Yeah, so they were at, uh, like I said, the second time, this is 38 million gallons. And uh, the last time, it was approximately the same amount that they got rid of. So 70 million gallons of water just poof, gone. That's well, funny. these things happen. I mean, here's an example for you. Dad escapes jail after posting a letter full of excrement. He pooped in an envelope? Yes, apparently uh, it was a... Uh, the father of three put a letter full of excrement into the uh, post tray at a gardener station. The court heard. Okay. Apparently this guy was upset that the breakup of a 10-year relationship and was under the influence of sleeping tablets at the time of the innocent incident. Um, uh, okay, I, don't, I can't catch everything that they say in those commercials. You know, can cause anal leakage and walk, walking in your sleep <laughs> and upset stomach. And, oh, uh, for know, all the uh, medical things? Yeah, all the things at the end of the commercial, all the terrible things that could happen to you. But sleeping but tablets. But the last time I checked, I don't think they said anything about pooping into envelopes. No. I don't think that was one of the things. You know, they, they can cause everything else, though. You will sleep like a baby. You may not wake up again, but you will sleep like a baby. Do not drive heavy equipment. Okay. Do not poop in an envelope. <laughs> Unless told to by your doctor. Unless told to by your doctor. <laughs> if you find yourself pooping into an envelope and pooping yourself around the house, 
you may want to contact a physician immediately. <laughs> contact the Nut Hut at 1-800-NUT-HUT. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, moving on to Long Island. This is our local story. This is the one that... that Wait, I got to tease it first. Oh. Okay, are you done? No. No? <laughs> You're not done teasing yet. Okay. Twelve minutes. <laughs> the world's come to an end. Twelve minutes, quick. Oh, Get a bag of chips. Apparently, there is a new trend. That's they're calling it swatting. You know, like swatting flies and stuff like that. And they're calling it swatting, and apparently, the idea behind it is, you go online with your PlayStation or whatever. Um, online game that you happen to have and you play these games with people all over the place and if you lose you apparently get this you know I don't know you become a sore loser and so to kind of make yourself feel better you apparently call 911 tell them that you've killed someone and identify yourself as the person who lost the game that's the big deal so this, this just happened, um, just this week apparently, okay. right here on Long Island. This person lost the game, or sorry, he won the game, and the person who lost was so upset that he called 911 and um, told them, told 911 that the he had uh, killed his an entire family and um, he was going to keep on killing if they didn't stop him. So they sent the SWAT team. Apparently this is a, a big deal now. I don't understand this. Well, apparently the sole loser sent the SWAT team storming to a Long Island home Tuesday as revenge against his teenage video game rival. Right, because the, the guy on Long Island won and the other guy was upset about it, so he sent the SWAT team, based, because he's, these, the story goes, that he said um, he had shot several members of his family and was going to continue to kill. Apparently they had more than 70 emergency responders. Yeah. And all of this for that stupid game, Call of Duty. Remarkable. Which I've never seen, by the way. It may not be stupid. I don't Call know. of Duty? Yeah. It's big. I know. It's a big deal. I, I get that everybody loves it and all that. But your, nephew, your nephew plays it. Nephew? I don't Cousin? have a nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan. Oh, cousin. Cousin. Yeah, he plays. He loves it. Yeah, well, he wants to be an army dude. Call of Duty. Uh, I don't know. It, why? It, oh, this is the best when part. When you think about it, it's actually kind of uh, slick that he was able to pull that off. Well, yeah. But how did he call from a remote location? I know. That, and that they I didn't don't trace it back to wherever he was, you I know, guess North he, Carolina if he's, or whatever. If he's, his number's blocked, I mean, you can block your number. So they wouldn't be able to tell where you're calling from. Apparently, the, there's a whole big thing on this where um, you actually get points. Right, for, I see that. If they bring out a helicopter, you get points. Yes. And for the police cars, and for, for the, the SWAT, SWAT team, team, and, and for how the type they of enter entry. your house. Right. Okay. Apparently, it's very sophisticated, but unfortunately, very dangerous. Yeah, I would think so. What if they start throwing tear gas in your house or something? Yeah. I mean, really? I'm telling you, right? They start lobbing stuff into your house. Yeah. They had the hostage negotiators. They had the SWAT team. So uh, either this guy got a lot of points or he got a lot of, uh, you know, time in jail. <laughs> He placed the emergency call using the internet and could be anywhere across the globe well, because yeah, you guys are trying to track down the call's origin. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how he made that happen. Okay. I don't know sense. why the people called the police. The teen's mother told 1010 wins. Because he's a sore loser, because his mom doesn't keep an eye on him. Yeah. Okay, how about this? Tracy Johnson. She is now going to jail because she, be for fraud, is what it comes down to. It's all about fraud. Okay. She claims to be an agoraphobic. 
Okay, you know what an agoraphobic is, right? I think so. That's a person who can't go outside. They're oh, afraid to go outside. Okay. okay. That's not a person who's afraid of gory stuff. <laughs> no, they're not afraid of gory stuff. So now she's got an outside phobia. Wouldn't that be called outside phobia? I don't know what it would call, be called. Fresh air phobia? She claims to be an agoraphobic. Now, is this that is her? a picture of her, yes. Really? Yes. I don't think she's agoraphobic. Clearly comfortable she is clearly comfortable outside. She is. Um, I think she's got a small boobophobia. <laughs> That's a, that's a special well, term. Was, I can explain it to you, but it would take some time. She was getting um, benefits from the government for being agoraphobic. She claimed, really? yes, because she couldn't go out. She couldn't support herself. She couldn't get a job. Blah, blah, blah. Ah, okay. She claimed. Really? That so this we was, pay for crap like that? Absolutely. She claims that this was all brought on because she was living in New York at the time of 9 11. And so she's all freaked out. And she had post-traumatic stress disorder, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, but while all this is going on, over the course of like four years, she was living all over the globe. She wrote a couple of books. She was a travel agent. She was a tour guide. She, she did a special for uh, some TV network where she was outside with the gorillas. <laughs> um, Apparently they figured it out because somebody somebody tipped off the government, I guess. They saw her Facebook post. She wasn't even trying to hide it, <clears throat> not even a little bit. Um, so she was living the life that honest, decent, hardworking people could only dream of. Um, she's what, Matt? She looks like she's in Egypt or something. Yeah, probably. Um, she was all over the world. Um, <laughs> She's, she, at one point, she says that she was entitled to a little break. She a break was of what? <laughs> I guess from the indoors. I don't know. Yeah, right? From getting the, uh, the paycheck every week? Mm -hmm. uh, she was found guilty of 13 charges of fraud, dishonestly making a false representation, and dishonestly failing to notify a change in her circumstances, meaning she could go outside again. Mm -hmm. Okay, she got 48,000 pounds. Pounds. In benefits. In benefits. Okay. That's, you know, uh, probably going on about $60,000. So she's not from the U.S. No. Which is good because it's not my pocket she's picking. Well, get this. Mm. Because the money has all been spent, yeah. the government's not looking for it back. Really? Really. <laughs> I don't know. If you, look, if you look at her, does she not look like Jessica Hahn? It's kind of far away. How could you tell? Plus, Jessica Hahn's a lot older than that by now. Even though this woman is 52 years old. But really? But Jessica Hahn's way older than that now. Probably. Um, they said that she used the taxpayer's money to fund a, a lavish, globe-trotting lifestyle, all while exploiting a system that's designed to support society's most vulnerable citizens. But, yeah, they, they're not looking to get their 48,000 pounds back. She apparently paid back 600 pounds, and they figure good enough. I want to go to London and tell them I'm, I'm a... Agoraphobic. Start yeah, paying. right. Stop paying. Start, <laughs> Start kicking. Paying. I could Start use sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, I could. Easily, I could come up with so, lots of things I could do yeah, with that. Yeah, we can make that happen. Yeah. We can make that disappear in an afternoon. <laughs> All right. Strippers. Strippers. <laughs> Matt has something special he wants to Matt spend said that on. Strippers. <laughs> All right. I got. We're we're just about out of time. And I have, I have our, our good story. A good story? A good story. One of those stories that makes you feel like there are still good people in the world. That's what I got. Okay. Okay. This is, uh, his name is Hector Montoya. He's a nine-year-old. He lives in Texas. Okay. He's been saving for a year. To... Montoya? Yes. My name is Pablo Montoya. <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare, Prepare to, to die. die. <laughs> you don't even remember that movie. No, I don't. Uh, anyway. Do you know what I remember about it? They used to make a toss called Montoya's. No, I don't remember that. I know, before you thought. Anyway, he was saving for a year to buy a PlayStation 4. Okay, so he's saving up his money however he was making it. Apparently he wasn't making it, you know, on any job or anything. It took him a year to come up with the money. To come up with some guilt. He came up with the money, the whole thing that he needed in order to buy this PS4. Right. Okay. Right. There was a fire in his town, had nothing to do with him, totally non-related. 
but um, a mother and her, uh, I think it was her daughter, died in this fire. And he thought about it and he said, this shouldn't happen. So the people shouldn't die from stuff like this. This should not happen. He took the money that he had for his PS4, which I don't know what they cost, but it's got to be upwards of like four or five hundred dollars, somewhere in that neighborhood. He took that money. He bought a 100 uh, smoke detectors, got together with the local fire department, and passed them out and helped people install them in their homes so that they wouldn't die in a fire. Hmm. And how this old is this is kid? a nine year old kid. Nine year old kid. Yeah. How sweet is that? It's very good. So then he wasn't upset. He wasn't like, oh, well, you know, now I'm not getting my PS4 or whatever. He was like, okay, so now I'm going to start saving and I'll get it next year right. or however long it Somebody takes. Somebody bought a phone. A 19-year-old boy and his slightly younger sister heard about him and said, oh, no, we can't let him, you know, go through all of that all over again. They went out and they bought it for him. They gave him a PS3 and, and went out and got the full of themselves. <laughs> no, they did not. They bought the PS4 and gave it to him. How sweet is that? That's nice. Yes. So So he's walking around the town going, here's your $4 smoke detector. Put it in to save your life. What, whatever. The point is, he said that one life lost to fire is one too you many. You know what? That's, he's right. Absolutely. And you know what? Even if a smoke detector costs you 20 bucks, is your life not worth 20 bucks? I agree. So we'll do a public service announcement right now. If you do not have a smoke detector or a carbon monoxide detector, go out and buy one. It's the best thing you could possibly do to save your life. And uh, don't forget to change your batteries every year. When you do, don't forget to tape your battery up so that the top is not exposed when you throw it in the trash. So you don't burn your house down so anyway. So you burn your house down <laughs> anyway from a device that's supposed to save your life. Mm. <clears throat> that's been done, and we have photos of it. So, mm -hmm. yes, be very careful. Be very cautious. Dispose of your batteries properly. And raise your kids like this kid. And raise your kids like this kid. Yeah. I want to congratulate his mom. Get her on the phone. What are you waiting for? I think she did a good job. He's that concerned. I mean, I don't know many kids that would be willing to do that. Most of them be like, hey, well, my toy. I don't care about anybody else. Mm. I know several like that, actually. So he's a good kid. Yeah, we can put a couple together. Yeah. All right. So I think that's it for us. I think we're done. Um, now, uh, my read on the Paramount, don't forget, you got Kill Switch and Gage at the Paramount in Huntington Thursday, May 1st. Also, you have Volbeat and Trivium at the Paramount. That's going to be Thursday, May 8th. But coming up on May 3rd is Jenny McCarthy and Friends. It's supposed to be a very, very fun a comedic show so that's also at the Paramount that's on May 3rd so if you want to win them you go to the contest page on the radio and you can click there to win or you can go if you need extra tickets and you, you want to get for the whole family or if you just never win anything and you want to make sure you're definitely gonna go you can buy them go to ParamountNY.com and check out all the other cool shows they got they got tons of cool shows there they're loading up really nice yes they, they are got some good people there. and we will have those tickets to give away for you here on radio.com so check that out and come back in a couple of hours. We've got Nerdgasm. They're uh, talking Spider-Man tonight. Spider and they've got some Man. special guest. I'm not sure who he is, but he's a big deal. He's a big deal. Well, you know, Spider-Man. You know, they don't have the actual Spider-Man. He's a neighborhood Spider-Man. He can All do right. anything spiders can. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spider-Man. I know. Okay, so come back in a little while for Nerdgasm at 10 o'clock, talking Spider-Man, and tomorrow night, Dear Dad will be back. Finally, Dear Dad is coming back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So. Tony was following in Ravio van last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, so let's see you later. Bye.